what's good everyone welcome back to the channel and in today's video i'm showing how to build an ai agent on n8n the right way with postgres chat memory and superbase vector store because again as i mentioned in the previous video quite a lot of people use window buffer memory and after some research i found out that it's not the best way to do it so if you haven't watched the first video where we've set up the first part of the AI agent, which is actually setting up the connection for Postgres chat memory and setting up the connection for Superbase vector store. I'll put it in the card so you can check it out. And in this video, we're gonna be uh, building out step-by-step step, uh, how to basically upload files to a vector store from Google Drive automatically and how to update um, when an update happens in a file so you wouldn't be uploading duplicates uh, into your vector store tool also if you ever want to work with me or have any thoughts about projects in your mind there is a link in the description down below to which you can reach out if you have any questions about uh, automation or you want to work together so without further ado let's jump into the video and let's you know continue from where we left um, the last time so again we have the AI agent built out for chatting and retrieving the data but now we actually need to have a process of adding the data uh, in the Superbase vector store so the first thing that we're gonna need is to add a new node from Google Drive yucks I can type Google Drive and for triggers uh, we're gonna select uh, on changes to specific folder. Yep, we're gonna select this one. So I already have a connection for Google. Unfortunately, this video, I'm not gonna build out the connection for uh, Google console. You can actually find uh, quite a lot of videos um, showing that, so yeah. Um, but we're gonna build out the rest of this. Uh, so for the trigger, uh, select changes involving a specific folder. In my case, I already have a folder for this. So let's, it should be super base agent. Let it load. Yeah, super base agent. So I'm gonna show you the folder. As you can see, I have an N8N folder and then inside I have a super base uh, agent folder where I have currently one file. Um, if you go back, then here we're gonna watch for file updated and we're gonna rename this as file updated. Rename and we have it like so. So this is gonna be a first part and then we also gonna be uh, basically updating the vector store based on file creation. So again, it's good to update files, but also we need a flow where they're being created. So file created, rename it. And then, uh, yeah, trigger on changes involving a specific folder from the super base agent and then file created. And that's pretty much it. So let's run it and it would, should retrieve the one document that I have. Fine, we have that. So the next node that we have to add is a set node. Um, and with this one, we're gonna be retrieving the ID of a file because we then need to add it into a metadata for when we need to update the file in a vector store. So here, let's select manual mapping, the name, I'm gonna select this as file ID. And for value, I'm gonna map the ID, which is gonna be somewhere here. So as you can see, it already pulled out the file ID of from uh, my Google Drive. So we have it here. Um, the next step is deleting old files in Superbase. So let's go Superbase. And then 
I think it's delete row. So for the credentials, I already created the credentials in the last video. So if you haven't checked that out, you can check it out. Uh, so for the resource, I'm going to select row. For operation, I'm going to select uh, delete. And for the table name, um, so let's go again into Superbase. Mm -hmm. Let's go into the latest project of mine. So let it load. But basically, um, as you can see, you need to select documents table because if you followed the video previously and uh, added the table, it created a documents table. And this is a function, as you remember. So you need to select the table name documents. So let me go into here, into table editor, and you will be able to see when it loads that over here you have a documents uh, table. Um, so then for select type of the deletion, we're gonna select string and then in filters, we're gonna write an expression for the Postgres SQL. So it's gonna go like this, metadata, then like an arrow symbol, file ID equal like dot two stars and then we add the expression of file ID. So yeah, maybe I'm going to write JSON here dot file ID and I'm writing it manually this because I haven't run test this step previously. So I haven't had any data here, but now you can see it's green. And it shows that here in this case, we have the ID of a file from the Google Drive. So yeah, it's still loading. Yeah, so basically this is the table that I was talking about, uh, the documents uh, table in this case. So it basically right now what it did, it deleted the file. Now the next step we need to do is to actually download the file. So again, we're going to go to the Google Drive and this time for it would be an updated file. So let's select this node. Let's go to the file download and I'm going to select by ID and I'm going to select expression. Uh, go to the set file ID and select this particular uh, ID. Uh, then for options uh, for Google file conversion, we should select for Google Docs. Uh, text txt and in this case I'm not going to be using um, the others so I'm going to leave it as it is but for example for Google Sheets it's by default select CSV so that should be good now let's test this step and as you can see we were able to now download in this case would be an updated file so the next step would be to add the extract uh, from file extract from file node and extract from the text file. So input data field binary and destination output field data. So again, let's test this step and we're getting all of the campaign notes, for example, in this case that I have in a Google Docs uh, file that I have in my Google Drive. Then the next thing we need to do is actually select Superbase Vector Store again and in this case, uh, we need to add documents. So let me just fix it real quick. Uh, for the credentials, again, I'm going to select video, the, the last one we built. Uh, for operation mode, insert documents. And from the list, for the table, again, select the documents table. And now this is actually important. For the query name, select the function match documents that was created uh, in a super base. So now we have this, um, then we can leave it and add open AI embeddings for the credential. Again, I'm going to select the test credentials I have for model. For me, it selects text embedding three small by default. So this one is going to be, uh, which one I'm going to use. We can move it a bit to the side and then uh, the next thing we need to add is a default data loader. So the type of data 
JSON load specific data. And in this case, I'm going to use expression and it's going to be JSON. Uh, yes, and you can see there's object data. So I'm going to select data and we have it. We can see the result is like campaign notes, Moonbite snacks from the Cosmos brand product, so on and so forth. That's good. It means it's working. And the last thing we have to do is to add recursive character text splitter. So in this case, uh, it is a recommended one. So that's what I'm select. Chunk size 1000, chunk overlap 100. Um, I always have myself the question which chunk size and which chunk overlap I should choose. So in this case, what I do, I usually ask OpenAI what is the best approach for uh, my particular uh, case and for my particular file structure. So now we basically have it all set up. Now, if we go into our Superbase refresh, uh, you should see that we basically have everything. Uh, the data is empty. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run um, the node of a Superbase store vector. And as you can see, it ran successfully and it should have added the data. So let's refresh again. And yes, we added the data about our campaign notes. So this was the file that I actually added into my Google Drive. If I click on it, you can say you can see that this is actually a fictional data, but let's say it's campaign notes that we took in a meeting. We were talking about brainstorming about campaign ideas, for example, for moon bites, for echo men's. Uh, the time traveling watch, Velox, Glowtech, Bioluminescent fitness gear, and so on. So it's actually like obviously fake data. But now, essentially, we have everything set up. And uh, we can chat with the data. And for example, we can ask what uh, were the campaigns we discussed about. And for example, in this case, if I would have uh, mentioned the date from which date the notes are, I could ask specifically about specific notes. So let's give it a moment and it's going to provide us an answer with the data. So actually, yeah, it pulls out all of the uh, campaign data, as you can see. So that's quite cool. But now let's imagine we want to update the data. And in this case, what I'm going to do is um, let's say I'm going to say KPI for here, for this, let's say 200,000 impressions like so. So we essentially updated the data source. Now, if we go back to the workflow and we run it again, what is going to happen, it should delete the file because it has the same metadata ID. So it returned an empty. So I guess it updated. Let's check if we have more rows or we have three rows again. Oh no, we have six rows. Okay, so it's me from the future and I actually noticed that I had a major issue, a major thing that I missed. So as you can see, I created a lot of test uh, rows. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of the rows that previously I created from the Superbase because I actually forgot to add a file ID as a metadata in a default data loader. So when you're building this out, go to the default data loader uh, again for the data, just like json.data and from the value we have to set uh, the file ID from the set file ID node. So this is uh, very important information. Um, let's say in this case, again, I'm going to run this. Um, it's going to update the rows uh, in here. So we should have new rows, three rows, and it has the KPI that I, I added this time. So let's ask the agent what is the KPI for which uh, for Moonbytes campaign. So let's I'm gonna copy what is the KPI for and it's gonna give us uh, a KPI for this specific campaign. 
So as you can see, it says to uh, 200,000 impressions. But now I actually want to show you how it's going to update uh, the file. So go, let's go in here and let's select, let's say 500,000 impressions. And now we're going to run this again. Um, so it should be, uh, as you can see right now, instead of returning an empty uh, list or an empty JSON, it shows that it deleted three lines and it actually updated the data. So right now, if again, I go here, I copy the name of the Moonbytes um, and then I ask the agent, what is the KPI for Moonbytes? It should return a result of 500,000 impressions this time. So as you can see, uh, the data was correctly updated. And if you wouldn't have added this update and you would just uploaded another file on top of it, what it would have done, it would return you the two KPIs, one of 200,000 and another of 500,000 because the previous wouldn't have been actually replaced, just added an additional on top. So this is how you can actually build an AI agent with Superbase, Vector Store, and Postgres chat memory. If you enjoyed watching this video, hit a like. And if you have any questions about this automation, there's a link in the description down below through where you can reach out to me. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one.